Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for government. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEB, Calbipedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. In today's class, we are going to learn uh, these factors or those things that are responsible for why uh, citizens behave or react in a particular way to their polit politics. Now, we're going to look at specifically uh, public opinion and the mass media. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the meaning of public opinion, how public opinion is formed, that is uh, agents of public opinion, state how to measure public opinion, then state the meaning of mass media and also highlight the importance of mass media, especially in our democracy. Now, let's look at the meaning of public opinion. There are various ways to define public opinion. We can define it as expressed views and ideas of a people on a specific public issue at a given time. We say expressed view in the sense that it's not what people think or what people feel about us and then is what they express by their behavior, by their communication on specific public issue. That is public matter that affect the generality of the public. Also, we define it as the popular views among a population about the policies and actions we relate to the political process. So popular view in the sense that we are talking about majority view, the view held by majority of the citizens on issues that affect their political affairs or issues that affect the political process in their state. Now, we also define it as expressed view of majority of citizens on public issues and policies. Now, why we say expressed views of majority? Because what we take as the opinion or the view of the people or of the citizen as that which is expressed by the majority of citizens. That is why in uh, some elections, for example, we, uh, when we, they do a, um, an electoral system called absolute majority, you find out that that absolute majority is the expressed view held by um, over 50% of the public on that particular matter. So we're talking about what the people view in terms of their expression, their expressed view, what they think, their feelings, their ideas expressed about public issue. That is whatever that affect the generality of the public. Now let's look at <clears throat> some of the characteristics of public opinion to understand better what public opinion is all about. Now, it number one, it must involve public issues. It's not it's not expressed in private matters. It's not expressed in family matters. It is that which is about the polity. The, which affects the generality of the public. Now, it can at times, it may be on private matter, but when it affects the generality of the public, example, in this 2022 and this uh, um, September 2022, the governor of River State, Governor Nelson, we can sign into law for women to have inheritance. In the, from their father's property and no longer the males alone. Now, this is a public matter now. But why it is still in, within the confines of the family, it's a private family matter, it's not a public, but when the government comes into it or when it affects the generality of the public, we talk about public opinion. It could be in an election because it's a public matter, it's a public issue. 
It could be government policy. It's a public issue. So that thing must be a public issue, must affect the generality of the, gov of the public or has to do with the government or what government has decided to do, the government policy. Number two, it is shared by majority of the citizens. Now, what we take as public opinion is that which is expressed by over 50% of the population or of the concerned citizen on that particular public issue. So it's not that which is held by any person, but that which when we look at it collectively, we say that majority of the citizens or of the people affected are actually expressing their view. This is their own expression. This is what they think about a particular matter. So it is shared by general uh, majority of citizens. Three, it is expressed by private persons and not by the government. It is not the views expressed by the government that we call public opinion, but rather that which is expressed by private persons, private citizens, that we call public opinion. Also, it is held on specific issue. It is held on specific issue. So there must be a particular matter that will bring about the reaction of citizens in terms of expressing their views. Example, the matter could be, example in Nigeria, a particular, a popular candidate picked Muslim Muslim ticket. That is the issue, that is the specific issue. The expression, the views of the public on that particular matter is what we are talking about. Example, it could be in a country like Russia that Russia is going into war against uh, um, Ukraine. Now, what is the expression of the Russians on that particular issue? So there must be a specific public issue that is being referred. Number, the next one, the f uh, fifth one, is that public opinion is dynamic. It is not static. It changes from time to time. Example, the party in power today, which is based on the expressed view of the public, that is public opinion, may be different from the party that may come into power next time. So it changes its dynamic. The public may prefer this this time or may prefer the other one. That's their opinion, their expression will tell towards a particular public matter in favor of a particular thing. They may elect a candidate this time. Next time, in their view, this candidate is not good enough. We need this one. So it's not static. It changes from time to time because it is a social phenomenon which is subject to change. Also, information and communication play a crucial role or play crucial roles in public opinion. Now, this is why we're also going to, we're also going to talk about um, mass media in this topic. So, you see, the information people receive and uh, what is being communicated to them plays a very crucial role. Information and the sense that what they receive and also what they communicate. Plays, uh, play a crucial role in public opinion. And that is why we talk about agents of public opinion. So what people hear actually inform how they react to public issues. So these are the characteristics of public opinion. Remember, we are, if we are talking about expressed views on the public on specific public issues. Now, let's look at the formation of public opinion or what we call the agents of public opinion. Here, we are talking about what are those factors responsible that inform people's opinion or make people to react in a particular way towards public um, issue or public matter. What are those things? Number one, which is the most important, is mass media. Remember, when we talk about mass media, we're talking about various channels of reaching to the public in terms of informing the public, giving them information on one thing or the other. Now, here we talk about the newspapers, we talk about the, um, tele um, the radio, television, etc. Now, most information people get that make them to react in a particular way or to view public issue in a particular way is from the mass media. What they hear, what they listen to, 
what they read in the newspapers, what they read in the uh, social media, what they re uh, listen to in news and from radio and television, inform the way they react it towards public issue. And that is mass media. And that's why we regard it as number one agent in the formation of public opinion. So they inform us and mold our opinion. Number two is political parties. Now remember, political parties are an organized group of people that aim to form and control the government by contesting and winning elections. Now political parties, they carry out uh, debates on public matters through their campaigns. What they say, what they tell the people they're going to do, how they're going to actually approach a particular public matter. And also through their manifestos, these things help to actually inform public opinion or make people to, okay, sympathize with this party. In terms of how this party says it's going to address this particular public opinion, some people, they can get sympathizers. And of course, what they do, because they aim to win people's vote, they normally persuade people. So they help to inform public opinion. The third one is pressure groups. Remember, pressure groups are organized group of people or interest group that aims to inf that aim to influence government policy in the interest of their members. Now, you see, pressure group, they educate the public on public issues, especially that which affects their members. You see them do seminars, you see they carry a press conference to address a particular public matter that affects their members, and in so doing, they get the sympathy of the public. They also go on protest, and they make people know about their view, their reaction about a particular thing, and some people can sympathize with them. So they help information of people's opinion, and especially the members' opinion towards public issues. The next one is person's cultural background. The cultural background from which a person is coming from, actually, it could be in terms of religion. It actually informs the person's view on public life. Then gossip and rumors is another one that spreads like wildfire. Now, in the polity, at times, this, when we talk about rumors, we are talking about unconfirmed news. Now, some of these unconfirmed news, especially now that we have social media, we have people can come up with anything they imagine and put it up in the net, and uh, people will read it and react based on that and believe it. That there is a president I don't want to call him, that people believe that is dead, that the person governing that particular country is not the president. And this is a rumor, it's not confirmed. And many people react to their government based on that information. And that is what we call rumor, unconfirmed news. It spreads like wildfire and many people believe so much in it. So it also helps to shape public opinion. Then the family, the family background, where an individual, a person comes from, also help to influence their opinion. The way the family sees a particular political matter, a particular public issue, especially uh, families that are politically educated and that will get uh, make sure their uh, children are up to date about political happenings or political issues in their state. You find out that such people from such family, the family, the way they react to political matters will help to influence the opinion of the people from that family. Then opinion leaders. When we talk about opinion leaders, we're talking about people that their opinion matters a lot. People look up to them. People want to see things politically the way they're saying things. Example, you can talk about our traditional rulers. Now, these are opinion leaders. Uh, you see that at times during policy, during electoral process, some people want to know where is my opinion leader going to. Some people have what they call political role models. So opinion leaders could also be religious leaders. Some people believe so much in the way their religious leaders see a particular public matter. So if their religious leader is for this candidate, they'll go for that candidate. If the religious leader criticizes a particular government policy and uh, 
sees it as negative, you find out that members will also see the same way. So these are opinion leaders. Some traditional rulers also fall into this category. Even some employers fall into this category, especially to their employees. Also, we have the government. Of course, we cannot take away government from the agent of public opinion or help in, form, uh, in uh, forming public opinion. The government does this by, um, when government makes policies, of course, the agencies of government, the ministries, the parastasis of government in charge of implementing that public uh, that particular policy, we go on and educate the public, make the public to understand and sympathize with the policy of government. So government does not come up with any law, any policy without educating people through its agencies. So it will educate people and by doing that, it will attract the sympathy of people and also make people to key in into their policy. So government is one of the number um, major agents of public opinion. Then education and socialization, as here we're talking about exposure of a person. Now the way the person is exposed in terms of education and socialization helps to form the opinion of that person. Now let's look at measurement of public opinion. That's here we're talking about how do we determine public opinion? Example, we're talking about if, okay, political parties or candidates are contesting for election, or government makes a policy, how do we determine what people think or feel about the, um, this policy of government or this particular issue in terms of who to be elected or who to be the leader or that the government? Number one is elections. And remember, election is a democratic process by which people choose the leaders or those that we govern them by voting. Now that choose, they are making opinion. Now that their vote is expression of opinion. So when they vote, they express the opinion about, okay, among all these candidates, this is the one. Or among these parties, this is the party that I think the manifesto is attractive enough to actually um, address the public issues in our country or some of the problematic issues with the country is facing. So election is number one way to determine actually this is what the public has expressed. So the outcome of any election is the expressed view of the public. We also have what we call referendum. Now, it's a type of election, actually, but this time it, you don't elect people. Now, in a referendum, government organizes election where people vote on a particular public issue. So it's not about electing, it's about yes or no vote. We want to do this. So what's the reaction of the public? Now, the government will organize election for people to vote, yes or no. We've had a case of countries that uh, uh, and the case of uh, same-sex marriage became a controversy, and the, the government to actually bring it to you know rest. The government decided to carry out a referendum where people voted, and uh, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, um, um, those for same-sex marriage actually won in that country. So, this is what we call referendum, even to decide whether. Southern Cameroon and Northern Cameroon, which were jointly administered with, administered with Nigeria, the, the issue of we are to join during independence, uh, they conducted referendum. We saw the Northern Cameroon joining Nigeria, while the Southern Cameroon joined the Republic of Cameroon. So that is referendum. So the government can organize a referendum to, to determine public opinion. There's also what we call opinion polls. Now, opinion poll is actually kind of survey conducted by taking some samples and eliciting response from them to actually determine the probable outcome, especially in an election. Now, during the electoral period, an electoral process or bef that's before the election proper, now, there are people that organize what we call opinion poll we are they will make some respondents to actually say who they we vote for should this election come. Now, it will be used to actually determine the probable outcome of an election. So that opinion poll, it's also used to determine public response, public view. 
Now, we also have what we call public response, sharp public response. Now, government can come up with a policy. Example, in 2020, what happened in Nigeria? Uh, you saw the case of uh, protest against the uh, disbanded SAS, Special anti robbery Squad in Nigeria. Now, this is what we call sharp public response. Now, something can happen. You see people come over, come all around the place, demonstrating, protesting, rioting. That is sharp public response. It is showing clearly that the public is against this. So that's another way to determine public opinion. Also, sampling can be used to determine public opinion. That is, in sample, you say, OK, you pick representatives, get their response, and use it to generalize others. That can be used to actually determine public opinion. You also use sample when you do opinion polls. Now, another way to determine public opinion is expression of people through comments in mass media. Now, in some media houses, you find out that they have a program where they come up with a particular topic, a particular public issue, and give their phone number for people to, all, to call them and show their response. Now, that response, the expression of people can be, or in the media, can be used to determine public opinion. Even in social media, at times, a particular public map that will pop up for people to comment. So people's expression through this media can be used to determine public opinion. Now, let's talk more of, on opinion poll. Now, when we talk about opinion poll, we are referring to a scientific method of measuring the choice of people on a given sociopolitical issue by getting a public opinion from a sampled population. Now, here we are talking about, <clears throat> that's, we want to know how people will react. It could be how people will vote in a particular election. Now, we take up some samples, okay, from these states, these people, from this state, we take up some people at random. Now, get responses from them. Now, that thing is what we call opinion poll. Their response is the opinion poll. Now, the opinion poll can be also, can also, like I said, be used to determine the probable outcome. That's the likely outcome of an election, if well conducted. Now, let's look at factors that make opinion poll unreliable. This is a wire question. Now, number one is lack of expertise knowledge by officials conducting the polls. Now, when those conducting the poll lack their requisite knowledge to carry out the poll and how to go about it, it will actually make the outcome unreliable because there is a particular method of doing it. If you don't sample very well and make sure you actually represent the population very well, it will affect the outcome of the poll negatively. And also, inadequacy or reliable technology, which may produce, um, produce a accurate results. When we lack the requisite technology to do this <laughs> opinion poll, sample it well, and get reliable uh, results, if we don't have it, it affects the reliability of the result. High level of illiteracy and ignorance among the people can affect the reliability. Now, example, you're asking people, um, soliciting opinion of people who don't understand the issue in question. They can give you any answer at random. You're asking an illiterate who doesn't listen to news about the candidates in election they, that doesn't know the candidates. And you mention the candidate, the person quickly says, okay, this person. You can't be reliable. Also, problems of analyzing statistical data. At times, some people don't know how to analyze the data because when you gather all these uh, response, of course, you have to analyze the data. You have to analyze the numbers you are getting. So problem in analyzing it can also affect the reliability of the opinion poll. Also, lack of objectivity among respondents. Now, some respondents uh, are, are sentimental in their response. They are not very objective in their response to issues that are brought up to them. So it can also affect this. Now, people get scared of being interviewed. There are some people that shy away from anything interview because you have to interview people to actually get their response. Now, some people shy away. They don't want to be part of the interview. So it affects the outcome of opinion poll. Then poor communication network. 
to actually reach out to people that actually understand the matter and actually get their response affect. Possibility of manipulating the figures generated or gathered during the exercise. Actually, some people manipulate opinion poll because at times some agents conducting the opinion poll can be biased, can be doing it for a particular candidate. And at times to actually make people believe that a particular candidate will actually win and make them to sympathize and vote for a particular candidate, they can manipulate the figures to make it look as if this is the right candidate. So the possibility of that manipulation can affect the reliability of opinion poll. Then the selection of sampling may be misleading. At times you can decide, okay, you're picking uh, um, people from this area. It may not be representative enough. You may pick the old but not picking the youth. And you can't say that the way the old people, the elderly, will react to a particular matter is the same way the young people will react to a particular matter. Then, respondent may be highly influenced by cultural, religious, and traditional sentiment. This all boil down to being uh, sentimental. The respondent may not be objective. They may be talking based on their cultural background, religious background, or their traditional sentiment when they are responding to a particular um, public matter. <clears throat> now, let's look at the rules or importance of public opinion in our democracy. Now, <clears throat> it, it's a public opinion serves as a good indicator for guide to government that are mindful of public opinion in formulation and implementation of new and controversial policies. That is, <clears throat> it serves as a guide to government in making its policies and in implementing the policies. So government will actually tap from the opinion of people, listen to the people, and know what the people want, and that will determine the policy of government. The public opinion is also used to counterbalance the views and interests being advanced by pressure group. You know, a pressure group is an interest-seeking group. They are there for the interest of their member. It, in most cases, it's not the interest of the general public. Now, public opinion, the express view of the people can be used to actually counterbalance or counter the opinion expressed by pressure group. Now, it enables candidates during election to ascertain their popularity before the election. Here, we're talking about opinion poll. Now, people can use opinion polls to actually determine their popularity before, even after election. Election will test the popularity of any candidate. Then opinion poll can be used to test the popularity of a candidate before election. Also, it helps <coughs> uh, political parties in forming their manifestos. Now, through the reaction of the public, the expressed view of the public on public matters, it can help a political party to frame its manifesto to target uh, actually addressing the opinion or the needs of the people having listened to public response or expression. So it can guide parties in forming their programs of action. It helps to prevent rigging of election as it measures the probable, probable outcome of an election. What we mean by this is public opinion, especially through opinion polls, help to actually prevent rigging of an election. This is because <clears throat> public opinion through opinion poll can actually give people idea about the probable outcome, the leading candidate in an election. It also enables the government to in ascertain the impact of its policy. That is, the reaction of the people, the expression of the people on government policies can help the government to know the impact, whether it's positive or negative, on the public. Public opinion also serves as a watchdog to the government and as a result it helps to prevent misrule. That is, when people express their opinion, when people criticize the public and uh, the government on its policy, it can serve as a check on government, which will now prevent dictatorship on the part of the government because people will always be ready to attack, to criticize the government. Then it serves as the basis of laws in the society. Now, some laws are made based on the expressed view of the public on a particular public issue. Now, let's look at the problems of public opinion. At times, public opinions are difficult to determine. If you say, okay, election is uh, a way to determine public opinion, you find out that <clears throat> the voting population, at times, the majority don't even vote. 
So can we call the outcome of an election the public opinion? So at times it is difficult, even when you use opinion poll, the, the sample you may use may not be representative enough. So at times it's difficult to ascertain what is really public opinion if you want to measure it empirically. Okay, public opinion, another problem is it can lead to frequent change of government policies. Now, when we say frequent change of government policy, a situation where the government is mindful of public opinion, wants to carry everybody along and wants to listen to the expressed views of the people on public issues. Now, it can always make government to change its policies because government will make a policy today, people can say tomorrow, no, they don't want it. Government will change. Tomorrow, another set of people will say, no, 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 it's impacting negatively on them. Government will change it. So it can lead to frequent change of government policies. It can lead to delay in decision making, especially when the government <coughs> wants to carry every shares of opinion along, make sure opinion of the various interest groups, various groups are represented in the state before taking any policy. Before making any policy, it will affect the, uh, uh, the timing of the policy. Also, it can be a threat to national security. This especially when it turns into a riot. It becomes violent. People became, became violent in uh, expressing their opinion through demonstration and riot. It also depends on quantity and not quality. Because public opinion is the expressed view held by the majority of citizens or public on a particular public matter. Now, the, the view of the minority may not be wrong. It, we can't always say that the view of the majority is rather correct. At times, it can be diff it can be wrong, but of course, we have to take that which is expressed by the majority. Also, a lack of press freedom can affect public opinion because people will not be able to react. And at times, when you have lack of press freedom, you see that press which actually complies with the terms of the government or the dictatorial government in power can actually be misleading in terms of what it says that is expressed view of the public. Then, political apathy among the people can affect public opinion. When people are not interested in political activities of their state, actually it will affect public opinion because they will not express it. Then, ignorant, when people are ignorant of issues and you ask them to express their opinion, they express it out of ignorance. They say what they don't know. So these are some of the problems or hindrances to public opinion. Now let's look at the mass media. Remember, we mentioned mass media as one of the agents in formulation of public opinion. Now, mass media, in terms of meaning, is a term that describes all channels of information communication designed to reach many people at the same time. If you look at, we are talking about the radio, newspaper, television, even the internet, social media, they are all part of mass media. Any way you can reach out to generality of the public at the same time is what we refer to as mass media. And the mass media plays a very crucial role in our policy in our polity and that's why i want to look at the rules or importance of mass media in our democracy one <clears throat> it mobilizes that galvanizes people for political participation through the information it gives to people through shaping people's opinion or molding people's opinion it mobilizes them to participate to take part in political activities of their state also, it mobilizes people towards national development by bringing to them issues that affect national development, um, the concerns about national development, and also this will make people to key in to national development agenda of the state. It also enlightens the people or the public on government programs and the policies. Now, people can stay in their home, in their workplace, and know what the government is doing, or the policies and programs of government. It's not possible. It is through the mass media the news they listen to, the news they read, is through which they can know government policy. So it is the duty, the media that plays the role of actually indicating or enlightening the people on government policies. It also serves as an avenue. They also serve as avenue for expression of opinion by the public, both on national and international issues. Now, in the media, even in the papers, Newspapers, they give room. There are places we call opinion. 
where people express their opinion, letters to the editor, you see people write, express their opinion about a particular government issue, about what is happening in the state, even both locally and internationally. In the social media, you see what people say, what people express. Um, you also go to radio, you see how people will call the radio station to make the um, expression about the public issues in that state. The mass media also plays the role of a watchdog to government by providing a forum for making constructive criticisms on government policies. At times they call people for debate or interview where people will react, especially the opposition or people that are affected by a particular government policy to criticize, give constructive criticisms to uh, government policies. So mass media is the forum. In most cases, people's criticisms will not be known except when they criticize through the mass media. So mass media offers that opportunity for people to actually criticize the government. It also serves as a medium through which important national issues can be raised and debated and solutions provided. It's a medium. It's an instrument for protection, promoting the fundamental human rights of people. The mass media plays that role very well in promoting and protecting the rights of people. It does this by, one, educating people about their rights. Two, bringing to the public cases of gross violation of human rights and human rights abuse. And you see from there, people will actually react. You see a, a, a lawyer or an activist can take up the matter, or the government can come wade into the matter. So through the media, we benefit in terms of protection of human rights. It's also an instrument, the media serves as instrument for change in society. Example, fighting corruption and preaching morality. Yes, it is through media that we can see corruption being criticized. People express their view about corruption in their politics, in their polity or governance. You see the preaching about how we can live up to the standards and values of the society. These things are done through the media. They also educate the people about their right duties and obligations towards their state. They play that role very well. The media also <clears throat> informs the people about important national issues. It is through the media that people know about important national issues affecting them. Then they provide feedback to the government on its policies. That is why the media, the media serves as a link between the government and the people. The government informs the people through the media, and through the media, the government gets feedback on its policy because people will react through the media, and the government gets to know about the reaction of the people towards its policies um, through the media. Also, the media generates revenue by government through the payment of taxes. They pay taxes to the government, the media houses. So it serves as a, gen, a revenue generating uh, agency of government. So they, uh, though it's not owned by the government, uh, most of them, but they pay taxes to the government, and including their employees. Now they provide employment opportunities to large number of people, such as editors, scriptwriters, pressmen, people work there, and also they provide jobs to people. Then it serves as agents of political socialization, that's political education, to the people and it assists the government in policy formulation, implementation and evaluation. Yes, because it is through them, <clears throat> they know even better than government what people feel about government policy, how people react to a particular issue. So the government, they can give the government advice which help government in policy formulation, implementation and evaluation. They also keep the government in check to ensure good governance by also criticizing government. They expose the ills in the society. Yes, it was through the media that we know the ills, the evils people are doing in the society. They also protect minority interests by airing their views, making their opinions known to the government. They also mobilize support for government policies and program. It is through the media that the government can galvanize people for support on its policy and they finally, they serve as a link between the people and the, the government, or rather the government and the, the people, because the government communicates or reaches the people through the media, and the people react to government through the same media. So it's a channel of information between the people and the government.
Now, let's look at the reasons for the decline in the trust, in public trust of the media in recent years. One, politicization of the media. The media has been politicized, and some of them are owned by the parties, some party members. And you find out that this, the, what they uh, speak out, the information they give to the people are, be, are politically garnished. Then there is marginalization of opposition parties. At times, the ruling parties can use some um, media to oppress the opposition party and will not make the programs of the opposition party or the views of the opposition party known to the public by not allowing them to air their views. Also, at times, the media is not representative of minority opinion because the kind of people that express themselves in the media may not actually tell us who and who are actually um, presenting their views in, through the media. It's not everybody that has access to the media. Now, um, at times the media can be affiliated to the ruling, ruling party. It also affects the public trust of the media because some media are seen as agents of the ruling party. Now, um, employment of media personalities by the government. The government employs some media personalities and some media are um, owned by the government. Now, there is at times inaccurate reportage of events. At times before your watch, you see 100 people died. And when it will be reported, you, see, you hear 20 people. At times it could be 20 soldiers were killed in reporting, you hear three soldiers were wounded. So at times there is inaccurate under reportage of events. Then, report of fake news. Some media carry fake news, and that affects the public trust on the media. Then, some unprofessional conduct of some media personnel affect public trust on them. Then even corruption on the media practitioner where they will be bribed not to report a particular event affect public trust on them. Then at times some of their reports, some issues they raise fuel ethnic tension, especially in a multi-ethnic society like Nigeria. They can also escalate violence through biased reporting of events. It can lead to violence. Then writing of insightful reports or editorial. When people write insightful that can incite some people against the government or a particular against a particular group of people is one of the problems the media have. And also publishing of immoral materials. Some media is, um, specialize in reporting or publishing immoral, even pornographic material then and also uh, pornographic or immoral stories then at times some media serve as a, a platform for destructive criticisms instead of constructive criticisms and at times some of the reports of the media are unbalanced they don't look at the two side they just look at it from one side and report it that way now let's take a practice on our exam guide. We are taking government, um, of course for ye, we are taking at random, it's public of interest, we are selecting public opinion and mass media, which is the topic we did. So we are going to answer questions based on what we have uh, done today. Now, which of the following agencies help the most in shaping public opinion and of course when i taught you i told you that number one that shapes public opinion the most is mass media it's not pressure group it's an interest group they talk about their interests though they shape public opinion it's not universities and colleges yes schools also help peer group help but the mass media all these are agents of public opinion no doubt but the mass media is number one now this question says, what does the mass media rely on to gain public opinion? Do they rely on influential citizens? No. Do they rely on public and uh, rumor and uh, gossip, which is D? No. Now, to get public opinion, to gain public opinion, they rely on polls and survey they conduct to actually gain public opinion. Now, public opinion is the view heard by majority um, okay, they also the question should be held by the answer, of course, is majority, not minority. 
not civil servant, not politician, rather, rather majority. Now, which of the following factors limit the expression of public opinion that affects public opinion? The type of government, of course, the type of government affects. If it's a dictatorial government, public opinion is limited. If it's democratic, of course, they'll always express themselves. Religious belief or citizenry can actually, um, it affects, but not like the type of government. The high literacy rates affect, but not like the type of government. Then finally, let's look at which of the following option is the rule of newspaper, of a newspaper in a state. Remember, newspaper here represents mass media. Now, determines government appointment, no. Disseminates information, ensures fairness in newspaper circulation, ensures fair distribution of relief items. Of course, dissemination of information. That's their number one role. Thank you very much. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mark mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video.